So if you're looking for the champ, who do you think the champ is? Do you think it's the champ or do you think it's the champ? I really ran this joke when I did the Princeton Reverb Shootout, but it's still funny, which is why I still say it. Today, we are going to find out who is the true champ, the champ or the champ. And we're also going to talk about whether or not the champ is better for you or whether you should think about going with the champ. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy. Today we are shooting out two small 5-watt combos from Fender. The Fender 57 Champ reissue, this is the hand-wired model, versus the Fender 68 Custom Vibro Champ Reverb Amp, which gets points for alliteration. These amps have a lot of similarities, but they're also quite different in a number of ways. Why would you shoot these out? A lot of you might be asking. Some of you might have even loaded this up on your keyboard already. Oh, don't worry, I got you covered. Here's the thing, they are actually quite similar, and to people who are kind of outside the Fender tone realm, they would look at them and, and say, yeah, it's a couple of small 5-watt Fender amps, it's going to be pretty close within the same tonal spectrum. It's, it's when you're really in tune with the Fender amp sound that you realize how different they are. And they are quite different in a lot of ways. Now, the real reason to shoot these out is because these are the two tube reissues of Fender Champs that are currently made. So if you are in the market for a new tube Fender Champ, then these are your options. And we're going to try and help you determine which one would be better for you to invest in. Now, we're going to start with the 57 Champ because that's a little bit more straightforward as a vintage reissue. This is the hand-wired, lacquered tweed, pine cabinet, 8-inch Alnico Weber speaker, and this one is just really very close to what an original 57 Champ would be. This really is a true reissue in every sense of the word. Now, there are some little differences. Obviously, it's you know it's a, it's a vintage-style Alnico speaker, but it's different than the speakers that would have been in before. Also, this one comes stock with a 12A Y7 preamp tube, whereas I believe the originals would have had a 12A X7. Of course, that's something that you can switch out. Now, this one has three tubes. This has the 12A Y7 preamp amp tube, it has a 6V6 power tube, and then it has a rectifier tube. It has one knob, has one knob for volume, and it has two inputs. It has a high gain input and a low gain input. And if you know the 57 Champ, you know that that's really all you need. That's where all the tone is. It, it comes from a combination of figuring out what guitar you're going to do, where you're going to set the volume, which input you're going to use. And for all that it can't do, there's a lot that it can do. It's really not just a one-trick pony like some people say. There's a lot of versatility to these amps. Now, as some of you pointed out, famously, Jason Isbell, which as was also featured in the 5 Watt World video, famously said that to get the best studio clean tone, he was told to keep a champ under the volume of three. Now, on this amp that's so quiet you can barely hear it. Does it sound good? Yes, but you really got to crank up the microphones to even pick it up. And when you're playing in the room, you can't 
hear the amp over the sound of your own strings. Part of that could be the 12AY7 that comes stock in this one as opposed to the vintage ones of the 12AX7. Could be a number of other reasons. It, you know, there also could be some hyperbole around that. What I like to do with that amp, but it does have a great clean tone. It has great overdriven tones, mild overdriven tones. And then one of the most classic 57 champ tones is to crank it where it just becomes all mid range. That's just kind of cascading into itself. That's a very reminiscent of an Eric Clapton in the 1970s kind of tone, as well as the James gang and a number of others. Now the 68 vibro champ reverb amp, Here's where they get a little bit different. Well, uh, first of all, the way that they're the same is they're two small 5-watt tube amp combos that are based on the old amps. So again, in the spectrum of tone, they're going to be in the same ballpark. One of the big ways that this one is different is this is not a dedicated reissue, and they've done some things to really make it more applicable to modern players. This amp is as much a mini Princeton as it is a vibro champ. Okay, so some people might say, well, technically the vibro champ would have been a mini Princeton anyway, right? Like Princeton was a mini deluxe and you know, deluxe was a mini. This, no, 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 that, this, they're, they're, those are like siblings, right? The Princeton is like the little sister of the deluxe reverb. The vibro is like the little brother of the Princeton. The vibro champ reverb amp is like the mini me of the Princeton. Oh, wow. Hey, Jack, 2001 called. It wants its movie reference back. <sighs> there are two significant differences that make this one like a mini Princeton. The significant differences are that this one has a 10-inch speaker. It has a 10-inch Celestian speaker, and it has Hall reverb. Now, the Hall reverb is digital as opposed to having real spring reverb like a Princeton would. However, the fact that it has reverb and it has the 10-inch speaker really blends that difference between the Vibro and the Princeton as opposed to just a dedicated Vibro Champ reissue, which would not have had reverb and would have had a smaller speaker. The larger speaker really opens up the bass and really opens up the treble too. It's a much clearer, more open sound than that classic kind of compressed mid-rangey champ sound like you might have gotten. This one has two 12AX7s and a 6V6 power tube. The speaker is a little bit, it's, a, it's an okay speaker. It's not a bad speaker, but it's not a great speaker either. It's a Celestian 10 and that's one that if you wanted to kind of bump up and make them a little bit more even kind of quality of tone-wise, upgrading the speaker in the Vibro Champ would definitely be a good way to go. That being said, the speaker that's in it is more than usable. I've been gigging with this amp a lot this summer, and it's really a joy to play. It's a very, very fun amp, and it's if you're miking it up, there's a lot you can do with this amp because of the 10-inch speaker. So let's get back to some tone here. We are going to play these back-to-back. -back. Now, for the guitars that I'm using today, I'm using the brand new Fender Player Plus Stratocaster. I'm also going to use a Gibson ES345 in a few clips. We're going to play them various different ways starting with clean. Now, I mentioned the 57 champ trick of turning it way down to get the best clean tone. That's never worked for me just because of the volume. It is just so, so quiet. And I'm not somebody who needs to play loud all the time. Believe me, I prefer to play at comfortable volumes. But that is so quiet that I can't hear it. So what I like to do with these amplifiers is to turn them up to about six, but use the low gain input. That allows it so that the amp is warmed up and the tubes are working a little bit harder, but going into the low gain input, you're still totally clean, but not in just a really, really tiny kind of way. So we're gonna try this out with both. Now I am gonna keep the reverb on throughout this video on the Vibro Champ, partially because that's part of the sound. That's that's part of the difference. And when I play the Vibro Champ, I pretty much always have the reverb on at least a little bit. So I'm gonna keep the reverb on on the Vibro Champ. You heard the tremolo a little bit at the beginning. I'm gonna turn the tremolo back off now. But those are two of the key differences besides just the you know vintage versus modern reissue type thing is the Vibro Champ obviously has reverb and tremolo built in. So let's take a listen to how both of these amps sound clean.
Next, before we get into opening these amps up, let's try them out with a pedal. So for this, I'm gonna use a fairly transparent pedal. This is a great pedal, it's the Wampler Tumnus Deluxe. So let's hit them both with a pedal. Now I'm going to stay on this same setting. I'm gonna go into the low gain input with the volume on six and hear how it sounds if you boost it with an overdrive. <laughs> Now lastly, one of the reasons a lot of people get these amps is to just crank them and to get that huge tube saturation at more reasonable volumes. So I'm going to take the 345 now, I'm going to plug it into these amps on the high gain input and turn the volume all the way up. So let's hear these back to back and how they sound when you open them up.
So there they are, champ versus champ. Please let us know in the comments which one do you prefer. Do you prefer the champ or do you prefer the champ? Now, I'm going to be somewhat ambiguous, but hopefully kind of answer a couple of different things uh, as far as which one is the one that you should get. If I could only have one amp for my collection and as like an heirloom piece, it would definitely be the 57. It's a higher quality build. It's, you know, it's hand wired. It's got the pine cab. It's, it's like a time capsule of a great amplifier, one of the greatest amplifiers ever. For all other practical purposes, I would take the Vibro Champ for gigging, for recording, for just the fact that it costs less, even for tonal variants. The Vibro Champ is a way more versatile amplifier. The fact that you have the tremolo, the fact that you have the reverb, the 10 inch speaker really, really opens up some of your tonal options. If you watch my full review of the Vibro Champ, you'll also see it can do the classic champ tones if you really back off on the EQ. I'm going to put a link to that in the description if you want to watch the full review of that amp. There's a lot that that amp can do. And while I think the general quality of tone of the 57 is better and the quality of build of the 57 is better, it's not like the Vibro Champ is really slacking. It's not like it's a bad amp. You're not talking about something that's really good and something that's really bad. It's kind of, They're kind of more like up here. They're both really great amplifiers. And again, you know, when it comes to the versatility, it costing less, the Vibro Champ is going to make sense for a lot of players. So that would be my take on it. If you're looking for more of that heirloom piece, something that's a little bit more special, the 57 is definitely the way to go. But if you're a gigging or recording guitar player, that 68 Vibro is a really cool amp. And again, I gigged with that one a lot this summer and just mic'd it up and it sounded great. And there was a lot you could do with it because you could actually get it to a point where the tubes were hitting the sweet spot and and not be overpowering the stage. Now, that being said, you can do that with the 57 Champ as well. You just have fewer tonal options. You can't adjust any bass or treble. You, you, know, you can certainly play with your volume and your tone and things, but that's not that different than you can do with the Vibro Champ either. It is the 57, while it's not a one-trick pony, it does have a sound, and everything that you do is within that sound. It's a, a lower fidelity sound. It doesn't quite have that same crisp top end that the 68 has. Everything's a little bit more compressed. It's a little bit warmer, but the sound that it has is just beautiful. It's just a wonderful tone. So please let us know in the comments, which one do you like better? Which one would you take? Do you have either or both of these? Let us know down below. I'm Jack Fawcett. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Follow the links below where you can listen to some music and join me on Patreon if you would like personal gear tips. We'll see you next time.